I'm going to go through the four dive tanks in the game right now, being Doomfist, Diva, Winston, and Wrecking Ball, assessing their sustain, mobility, utility, damage, and versatility, and at the end, I'll summarise my opinion on who's the best dive tank to play with. But for those who've seen my tier list, and if you pay attention to the stat cards, you'll see the two tanks that I'm gravitating towards. Starting with Winston. I feel like some areas of Winston are hard to qualify, and aren't necessarily represented by the stat card, as I'll explain. First off, his sustain. Even though Winston's bubble received a small nerf, Winston's got a fair amount of sustain as a dive tank, with a large chunk of his health pool being armour, as well as his primal rage, giving him a second life. However, when compared to other tanks like Ramatra and Wrecking Ball, it's hard to put a sustain up any higher, especially when he hasn't got his primal. His mobility as a dive tank is also of course going to be high, as is the case with the other three tanks. Maybe he hasn't got the burst mobility that a Doomfist has with his punch, or that a Wrecking Ball has with his grapple and roll, but it's still enough to reach most places that you need to. His damage of course isn't great, but this is where I feel the stats can be a bit deceiving, since Winston's damage is not only consistent, but it can also cleave into multiple targets, something that I'd try to account for. His Primal Rage, if done with the correct combos, can also break down the enemy team. Where Winston's value really lies is his utility, of which 90% of that comes down to his bubble. Entire cooldown cycles and dives are built around the value that you as Winston can get from your bubble. It allows you to stay in the fight for just that bit longer, to draw just that bit more attention, so your DPS are able to make the big plays. Without bubble, Winston would be completely useless, and is solely the reason why you see Winston being played at the highest level. And that leads me nicely onto his versatility. Your bubble as Winston allows you to hold space and stand your ground much more effectively than someone like a Wrecking Ball, not to mention the variety of different supports and DPS you can pair up with a Winston. Either looking to rush it down with Lucio Moira or Lucio Kiriko, or looking to get value off your methodical dive cycles when you're playing with an Ana or DPS with more range. Unfortunately, Winston can't really control flanks unlike some other dive tanks which I'll get onto, and he can't really peel for his team either. But, if you're running heroes who can do those kind of things, and you're playing in a rank where you can get value out of your bubble cycles, then Winston can certainly be a strong tank to play. Next, I'd like to talk about Wrecking Ball. Bull's stat card kind of speaks for itself. One of, if not the best heroes in the game in terms of self-sustain. Not just with his adaptive shields, but also his natural shield health pool, which makes him significantly less reliant on healers. Hog is really the only tank that can compete in terms of sustain, but unfortunately, Hog is still trash due to the lack of a one-shot. If Bull does need heals though, his mobility can allow him to quickly reach his supports, or more likely, reach more health packs around the map, thanks to his roll and grapple. His damage is also there too. Pearl Driver and Minefield are dangerous burst damage abilities that can quickly cripple a backline, especially if there's follow-up, but also allows Bull to take on duels that a hero like Winston or Doomfist couldn't really do otherwise. Don't sleep on his machine guns either. Speaking of versatility and things that Winston or Doomfist can't really do that Bull can, one of them is to control flanks. If you flank as Bull and run into a Tracer, you have some tools to fight back, whereas Winston and Doomfist don't really have those same tools. Not to mention, you've got great tools to disrupt an enemy rush, dive an enemy backline, or dual isolated squishies. You're a pretty versatile hero. The only thing missing is that you can't really peel like a D.Va can, and instead, you can only disrupt or delay things with your roll and pile driver. Speaking of utility with things like Defense Matrix or Winston Bubble, Bull doesn't really have any of that. He's only really got crowd control in his boops and pile driver, but that's about it for direct utility. Of course, if you count things like drawing attention away from the front line, then Bull can certainly do that. But Bull hasn't got those consistent, reliable cycles that someone like a Winston has, which are forged around his bubble. Now moving on to Doomfist. Doomfist excels in burst mobility and burst damage. Quickly getting in and quickly getting out makes him a great pick to easily get on top of glass cannon type heroes like Watermaker as long as you're able to close the range. If however, on Doomfist, you're not playing up against those type of comps and you're playing up against something like a rush comp, then you do have that versatility to adopt more of a disruption-esque playstyle akin to a ball. That playstyle revolves around hitting juicy seismic slams onto as many targets as possible, using your power block to sustain yourself, and either getting out, or getting back in, and fishing for a juicy kill. However, you do struggle as Doomfist to control flanks, though admittedly, not as much as Winston, as well as directly peeling for your backline. The comps you're played with at the pro level are also limited, but in ranked, you can pretty much run anything and still be fine, even in most scrims. Similar to Ball, you falter in the area of utility. CC from your punch or meteor strike are pretty much all you have, and likewise to adaptive shields, your power block contributes to your own sustain and damage. Doomfist certainly isn't a bad pick by any means. In fact, that applies to every tank in this video. If you're comfortable with those mechanics and how to play against different comps, then you'll do just fine. 
especially if you're playing up against something like a Hanzo Widow Zen, someone like a Winston may not have the sustain, burst mobility, or burst damage that you on Doomfist have. Finally, last but certainly not least, I have D.Va. I've kind of saved the best for last here, and judging by the stat card, it appears that D.Va has no glaring weakness. Keep in mind that all dive tanks lack range, so if I included that onto every card, they'd have a 1 or a 2 out of 5 for range. But that's not what we're picking these tanks for. I'll start off with D.Va's strongest aspect, her versatility. She's kind of the jack of all trades tank, because she has the tools to do so. In particular, her utility. She's able to peel for her backline with her DM, or mark a lethal DPS like a Sojourn in Overclock. She's got the mobility to fly up to high ground if she needs to mark them too. However, she's also got the damage and sustain to dive or dual squishies with a large chunk of armor, micro missiles, and that DM to buy her some time. She can honestly be played into any composition in the game, but she won't necessarily be perfect for that situation. For example, if you're playing D.Va into a full rush comp, you want to rush your backline, D.Va's not the worst pick in the world. You just try and fly onto the Baptiste or onto the DPS and try to blow them up. But a Doomfist or a Wrecking Ball, we've got a lot more AoE and a lot more burst damage would be preferable. But because, especially in ranked, there is rarely a circumstance where it'd be horrible to play D.Va, she's a great pick to one trick with. She only really struggles on linear maps into broader comps, where she just hasn't got that burst damage or burst mobility that a Doom or a Ball has, and those linear maps are often where her value in marking lethal DPS just matters less. Lijan Control Center would be a good example. Overall though, D.Va is a strong pick to specialize in, and is kind of meta resistant in a way. She's arguably not even played like a dive tank most of the time anyways, because she's just so good at controlling and marking flanks, high grounds, and angles. Maps like Dorado, Paraiso, and Esperanza, or maps with crazy amounts of high ground, are ideal for her, shutting down the DPS that carry many games. So to summarize, and to rank these tanks, in last place, I'd probably put Doomfist. Again, Doomfist is a good hero, but in some ways, he's kind of a Walmart Wrecking Ball, just that he hasn't got as much sustain as Ball. Doom has the punching power, no pun intended, as well as the burst mobility to punish either clumps of enemies or isolated ones. I just feel that there's better or more versatile options. In third place, I'd put Winston. If you and your team can get some value out of your bubble cycles, it's a free win. But that's a big if. A very big if in some cases too. Winston can clearly be solo queued to GM, Boga is a perfect example of such, but again, I feel like the other two tanks at the top just carry a bit more versatility for your average player. Now in runners up, I have Wrecking Ball. Especially as of recent, Ball is a very compelling tank and solo queue option to play. I'm actually planning on making a video on the best solo queue heroes, and Ball will definitely get a mention in that. The value that you can get out of your damage, sustain, and mobility, that most importantly, aren't reliant upon your team, gives Ball that independence that heroes like Winston wish they had. Plenty more options to flank, dueling can also be easier too, especially if you get a pole driver off. And in first place is of course, D.Va. The name of the game is versatility, and D.Va's got 5 back to back gold trophies for that. There's a reason why she has one of the highest skill caps in the game, because knowing which playstyle to do when can be incredibly hard in the moment of the game, and can also switch on a whim. Whilst the other tanks might be better at disrupting or holding space, D.Va can do things that those tanks simply can't do, and that's why she's number 1. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time.